All right, we got The Eight Immortals by T.C. Lai. Lai, La, something like that. Okay. This is an old one. The Eight Immortals, the Chinese concept of Hisian, or his Hisian, or immortal, or immortal denotes a being which is at once ether, ethereal and worldly. The character Hisin is composed of two pictographic elements, man and mountain, symbolizing one who has retired from the world in order to live in a hermit's life in the mountains. Chung Su, Sung Su has, has described Hisin as a spiritual being dwelling on a mountain whose flesh was smooth as ice and skin as white as snow, that he was gentle as a young girl and required no food to sustain life, but inhaled the wind and drank the dew. An immortal sometimes assumes human shape and indulges in human pleasures, but nevertheless is possessed of supernatural powers. He resides in the upper spheres, and but sometimes descends to earth to convert an immortal and immortalize deserving mortals. Like human beings, he may be chastised for misconduct and banished to live on earth for a period of time and then reinstated in heaven. Immortality is said to be atta attainable by taking the elixir of life. Where can I get some? A drug, the secret formula for which is forever eluding origin ordinary intelligence, although some of the ingredients were revealed to cinnabar or red sulfide, of mercury, railgar, copper carbonite, mica, sal, ammonia, nitrate, and octree. Yeah, that's like most stuff will kill you. That's not in a book. I'm sorry. I just, most of that stuff will kill you. Um, immortality is also attainable by cultivating the mind with Tao as a model. Quietitude, passively, gentleness, self affectionment being the main characteristic, characteristic to be aimed at. For one reason or another, many famous figures in Chinese history were included in the ranks of immortals. They might be philosophers, state, philosopher, statesmen, physicians, mag, mag, magicians, and poets. Li Po, the poet, for instance, was considered one, and Cheng Ling, the Han Dynasty statesman, with another, was another. And the list can go on and on. Because of this great numbers, his sins were classified and described as celestial, terrestrial, or divine. Okay, where is the... Oh, these are... Mm. Celestial Hisens were those who have ascended on high and, and make their abode in heaven. Terrestrial Hisens remain on earth for an indefinite period while growing any older. Divine Hisens, or like demigods, dwell on the Isles of the Blessed. The eight immortals are the best known figures in Chinese mythology. They lived in different centuries. How and when they got together were never described. The number eight has some particular significance a kind of perfect number, as exemplified by the eight tig tigrams, the eight regions, and the eight directions, and so on. In this case, eight signifies certain conditions of life, namely youth, age, poverty, wealth, aristocracy, or, or, or aristocracy, plebeism, masculinity, and femininity. It was not until the Yuan Dynasty, 1260 to 1368, that the term was first applied to this specific group that we know today, which consists of Chong Li Huan, Chong Lao, Lao, Lu Tong Pin, Xiao Ku, I don't know, Li Qing Huao, Hung, all right, there's eight of them, right? And I'm sorry, I can't pronounce the words. Here they are, right, those people. Uh, the Eight Immortals theme was often used by the Wan Dynasty dramatics on which many short plays were written for birthday presentation. Hence its traditional popularity and we often find these immortals on paintings, por porcelain and so on. Okay, and then we just go and we start talking about these people. I thought it was going to be a little bit more exciting than that. This is putting me to sleep. Um, 
Yeah, well, if you would like to learn about these, the eight immortals in Chinese mythology, then it's right here. I highly doubt that they're going to have this on Amazon, but hopefully they do. And if they do, I will have a link for you. Now learn all about them. Let's randomly open a page and see if it's a little bit more interesting than what it was talking about. Oh yeah, this is great. I can't read any of that. Let's try again. Oh, look at that. Some more stuff I can't understand. Okay, here we go, right here. Let's read this little guy, this little paragraph right here. This is Li Tei Kawa Ku Kuaya. I can't pronounce his name and I apologize for that. Uh, perhaps the most picturesque personality among the immortals was Li Tai Tua, or Iron Crutch Li, whose conversion is described in the short play which constitutes section two in this volume. One of the versions of the legend about him goes as follows. All right, well, I guess we gotta read a little bit. Uh, when Lai Li Xuong was immortalized, his spirit on one occasion had to leave his body to go on a trip, and he had been instructed, he had instructed his disciple to watch over his corp corporeal self, saying that he would be back within seven days, and on the understanding that he did not come back by then, the discipline might burn the corpse. However, if so happened that on the sixth day, the disciple's mother was taken seriously ill, and he was persuaded to go home and see her. So he had a pretty difficult choice to make between forsaking his mother or forsaking his master. And like a filial son, he burned the corpse and went home. So when Lai returned and not finding his own corpse, he was compelled to use the corpse of a crippled beggar. Besides the crutch, Li recognized, or recognized emblem is a bottle gorge of Calabas. That's it. That sucks. I mean, that was it. That was the story was kind of getting interesting. Like, what happened after? And he just came back and became a bum? That sucks. Anyways, again, if you want to find more about other people in this book, right? I'm not even going to try to badger their names. I apologize. Then I will try to find this on Amazon, and you too can try to badger their names. Unless you speak Chinese and then you're probably like, Eric, it's this. And I'm gonna be like, I apologize. My name's easy. It's called Eric. <laughs>